This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're gonna be delving down into the dungeon. We're gonna be trying to take out monsters and bosses, and we're gonna be trying to deal blows on turns when the monster dies with a little bit of press your luck in there as well, and a little bit of negotiation. We're talking about Bloodborne, the card game. Uh, this is from Cool Mini or Not, designed by Eric Lang for three to five players and based off the video game. Let me show you how it's played, and I'll see you on the other side. In Bloodborne, you're trying to take out 11 monsters. One of them will be a big final boss that you get to choose and put face up. And the other uh, 10 monsters, three of them will be bosses and seven of them will be normal monsters. Each player is going to start with a board with a token on each of these types of monsters and final game scoring. And everyone's going to get the same exact five starter cards. Now at the beginning of the round, a new monster will come out. This is the Beast Patient. Depending on this lantern, it'll be green, yellow, or red, depending whether it's easy, medium, or hard. This one's an easy one. It only has four uh, blood echoes that you need to get to kill it. Now, when playing with four players, you always add one blood echo, and with five players, you always add two more. In this case, we're playing with five players, so we have six total blood uh, echoes there. It also tells you what kind of monster it is. Now, this guy has a special ability. It says, when revealed, each hunter takes one damage. Everyone starts with eight in these little spinners, and so everyone would now would spin down to seven. Some monsters have special abilities, some of them don't. So the next phase, everybody secretly picks a card and places it face down. Table talk is encouraged to try to mess with people over. You can negotiate, you can lie. You're trying to, uh, you know, jockey for position to try to be able to take blood echoes from this monster. Now, once that's done, everybody will flip it over, and then a few things happen. Now the first thing we do is we check if anyone has it played a transform card. What this allows them to do is essentially see what everybody else has played, but then play another one. So this player can play a, now a melee or a ranged attack. Now the, the melees are the blue cards and the ranged attack are sort of the, the reddish cards. So this player, now whenever you play something, it stays discarded and out in front of you and you can always be able to see every card that you've played because a big part of the game is seeing what other people have played, knowing what's in their hand and knowing what their choices possibly are. So this player plays this. The next thing that happens is uh, uh, activating an instant effect. Now this one says, hey, instant effect, if you're the only hunter to play the hunter pistol, then basically you inflict damage immediately. Now normally this player might not have been able to take a blood token because this player, this guy might have been dead by then. If anybody else had played this, there would have been no effect, but this player would get to collect one of these blood echoes because of that instant effect. Now they go here in your collected blood echoes, but you lose them if you die. So you'll be getting blood and it's a little bit of pressure luck of waiting to when to rest and bank those bloods over here for points at the end of the game. Now after the instant effects, the monsters attack. Now you'll roll these die depending on what the lantern is. And some of these have a plus, which means it's cumulative. So if we rolled and it was a one plus, we rolled again, it was a one plus, that would be two and be three. Everyone would take three damage. We were at seven. And now we're going to be at four. Now remember, you don't want to die because obviously you won't be able to take, uh, take the blood this round. But we're down to four and then we would start to attack from first player turn order. So this player used the Hunter Axe, their first player. They would put two of these on their Blood Echoes board where I showed you before. The next player also would take two. And then this final player, because they played this, uh, this saw cleaver, they're gonna take one, and they're gonna take the last one. Again, these go on the, the board that I showed you earlier, and this guy essentially would be dead. Now, if he still had blood on there, the monster would then escape and nobody would have killed him. However, there's many of the cards, three of them that are in there are gonna be bosses, and you can tell because there are two types of monsters. Uh, it's supposed to say boss here. There's a little misprint in the first edition, but they're correcting that. I think they were giving out packs at Gen Con of corrected cards, so this would say boss. And if this guy was still alive, you would continue another round just as we did it until he's dead. But the regular guys, if they're not dead, they go away and the next monster comes out. If they're dead, then we move on. Now, anybody that played this Hunter's Dream card, this is a way to rest and to bank your blood. But also, any damage that were taken this round would have been rounded down uh, you know, taken half rounded down. So when this guy gave one damage at the beginning, he wouldn't even have gotten hit. When we did the three damage, he would have taken one. So if you're getting weak, you take this. Now a few things happen when the Hunter's Dream cards played. The first thing that happens is all the blood that you have gotten gets banked. These cannot be taken away from you. These are essentially one point each at the end of the game. 
then all the cards that you had played in previous rounds, including the Hunter's Dream, come back into your hand to be able to be used for later. Then you get to take an upgrade. Now these are always better than your starter cards. Some of them are really powerful, like the Kirk Hammer. This is my favorite. You do X amount of damage based upon the amount of melee weapons that you had played up until this point. So you take one of these, none of these refill until the end of the round, because if multiple people have played it, uh, the, the, the Hunter's Dream card, then you get to uh, go in turn order. Then you get to regain your health to a full level of eight. Now, if you died that round, you lose any blood that was stored here, they get up to eight health because they're alive again, and they get to take an upgrade card. But they don't get to bank the blood that they had lost, and they don't get to take any cards that they had played back into their hand. Now, anybody that actually dealt a blow to this monster on the round he was killed gets to move up the monster track one spot for anything that's on here. Some monsters have more than one of different types, and as you can see, there's going to be end game points at the end of the game. And this continues until you get to the final boss there's only going to be one per game, but here's the different ones that are on there. Notice they always have all three boss types or monster types, but awesome artwork here. So once you kill that final boss, the game ends. And when the game ends, if you have any blood that's here, it automatically adds. Then you add up all your blood tokens. These big ones are fives. And then you add the numbers below all these. And whoever has the most is the winner. And if there's a tie, it's the one who has the most banked blood. If there's still a tie, you share the victory. There's Bloodborne. Now, I'm not typically interested in anything to do with dungeon or combat or weapons and killing. I'm just a weird gamer in that respect that I know that's hugely popular, but I typically don't like those style of games and I've never played the video game. So I'm coming from that perspective. I'm sure many people will be reviewing this game that love the, love the video game or just typically love these style of games. This is gonna be right up their alley. This is not something that I usually like. With that being said though, uh, I can say that I enjoyed the game. I think there was a lot of interesting decisions to make in this game. Well, let's go down the list of the things I liked about it. First of all, the artwork is unbelievable. I don't typically like dark, dark themes and dark art. And this is sort of dark, but man, it was done so well that I was, you look at the cards and the, the art is just amazing. Uh, I really like that press your luck aspect where you're gaining blood tokens and you're trying to figure out, huh, can I get out? Do I have to do the hunter's dream to get out and bank my blood and get my get my, my health back or what? What are these people going to play? Sometimes they can play weapons that can hurt me. Uh, sometimes they'll be rolling the dice and keep rolling it and rolling it because it has the plus that I might get dead. So I like the aspect of that pressure luck. I also really love negotiation games. I love messing with my buddies. So, you know, talking about what cards you're going to play. Hey, he... You know, this monster's gonna get him up the track. He's already furthest up there on track. We don't want him to deal a blow here. Let's try to take him out before he does. Oh, someone, and then yes, y'all agree and someone screws up the plan or something like that. I like that aspect. I like the aspect of being able to transform weapons and you play something and you're waiting for other people uh, to play stuff and then you get to see what you wanna play. I like that. Uh, I like some of those instant effects. Some of them cancel each other out if more than one was played. So overall, I really like the aspect. It's pretty simple. You're playing a card, you're doing it out, you're trying to. To, to, to beat up the guy when he's, you know, get some blood on the turn that he's dead. And I like that aspect of it. Uh, so for something that I wouldn't normally even ever play or like, I saw a demo of it at Gen Con and it looked, the mechanics seemed interesting enough that I wanted to give this one a try. This is out of my normal comfort zone, out of my normal wheelhouse. And I gotta say, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. Uh, I have no ties to the board, the, the, the video game. So, and again, I'm not usually into these themes, but for coming from this perspective saying, I enjoyed the game, I liked it. I think says huge things because this is something I would usually try to even almost avoid on purpose. And I gave it a shot and I liked it and I enjoyed it and I love the, me the mechanics of it. I will say though, I think five players is too long. Um, it drags on. I feel like it could have been two monsters shorter with five players. Obviously you could, you could do it on your own, but I think smaller player counts is better with this game. It's quicker, it's snappier. Um, five is too many in my opinion. It just went a little too long for what it is. Uh, and that's going to depend on how much talking your group does as well. But overall, I was impressed. And coming from this perspective, that should mean a lot because I don't like these style of games. With that being said, that's Bloodborne. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.